I'm Colonel Ryan Wiley. I'm the Chief of Staff of the Maneuver Center of Excellence, and on behalf of our Commanding General, Major General Curtis Buzzard, and Command Sergeant Major Derek Garner, I'd like to welcome you, both those in person and virtually, to Fort Benning and the 2022 Maneuver Warfighter Conference. We have an impressive three-day lineup of keynote and panel sessions to get after this year's theme, focusing on tomorrow's fight. In the audience, we have attendees and senior leaders from across our Army, as well as students, leaders, and cadre for many of our courses here at Fort Benning to include MCCC, IBOLIC, ABOLIC, and NCOA, and over 800 attending virtually. I'd like to make a few administrative announcements before we begin. For orientation, when you exit the auditorium to your left is the east wing of the building and to the right is the west wing. Restrooms are located directly beyond the elevators with the women's to the west and the men's to the east. Fire exits are located on each side of the stage and through the auditorium, entrance and front doors of the McGinnis Wickham Hall. Major General Buzzard will provide details on our agenda for the next three days, but generally for today, we will have a 10 minute break at approximately 1040 and 1320 and break for lunch from 1150 to 1320. If you did not have a chance to register this morning, the registration center is located in the west wing and will be open throughout the day. Following the prepared portion of each session, there will be a time for questions from the audience. For those in the auditorium, please raise your hand and we'll bring a microphone to your location. Please wait to ask your question until you have a microphone. For online participants, we will have a live chat box where you may submit questions and I'll read that question for the audience. And with that, we'll now begin the 2022 Maneuver Warfighter Conference. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to present the Commanding General of the Maneuver Center of Excellence, Major General Curtis Buzzard. Thanks, Ryan. This is awesome. Having everybody back here, having all these leaders here, having our career course, our Bullock students, NCOA, everybody talking about war fighting. It's just great to be, uh, to be back in a big way. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to all our distinguished guests, leaders from across the maneuver force, and thanks to all of you for making, making time in your busy schedules to be here. I would like to begin by acknowledging the passing of an absolute legend. Lieutenant General retired David E. Grange passed on Sunday evening. He's former commanding general of the Infantry School in Fort Benning, legendary warrior, three-time CIB holder, um, and the founder of the Best Ranger competition. So our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family. It's truly an honor to serve as the commanding general here at your Maneuver Center of Excellence and Fort Benning. And it's great to have so many Fort Benning commanding generals and infantry and armor commandants, part of our program, are just attending this week. Welcome home. It's been almost two months since I took command, and the excitement won't wear off because of the people, the community, and the mission, quite simply to make people better. New soldiers come here to learn the fundamentals. NCOs and officers come here to prepare to lead at echelons, from squad to brigade, and soldiers and leaders of all ranks come here to gain functional expertise such as Airborne Ranger, Master Gunner, Sniper, Mortars, courses on the Abrams, Bradley, and Stryker, and I could go on and on. And throughout, we instill the warrior ethos. And you know all of this. We must live up to the slogan that Benning makes you better. Many in this room are from the operational force, our consumer, and we owe them the best, soldiers and leaders ready to fight and win in the crucible of ground combat. For the past two years, this conference has been affected by world events. First was the pandemic, and then last February, Russia invaded the Ukraine. So it makes this year's conference that much more important. And we wanted to go big and bring together the best leaders from strategic to tactical across the force. And you can't get much bigger than kicking off the conference with the senior leadership of the Army. And we're very excited to hear from them this morning. Our theme for the conference is focusing on tomorrow's fight. Central to this are two important points of emphasis. First, this focus on large-scale combat operations, or LISCO. Again, while still retaining our, our expertise in irregular warfare, we've been transitioning to LISCO for the last several years, but the Russian invasion clearly reinforces a sense of urgency. 
And secondly, we're on a glide path to field the Army of 2030, one guided by numerous studies, experiments, and war games that identified our LISCO gaps, but also is informed by Russian aggression in the Ukraine. As the Chief of Staff says, we are at an inflection point. We're transitioning from brigade to division-centric operations. We're on an aggressive modernization path, introducing important capabilities across the force. Short-range air defense, multi-domain task forces, future aircraft and combat vehicles, a variety of technologies to include longer-range fires, greater lethality, more and smaller UAS. And we're also learning how our adversaries fight and how to protect ourselves. As we've heard, the character of war is changing, the ways and means that we execute war. But the nature remains the same, a brutal contest of wills where leaders and soldiers must be physically and mentally tough, able to lead and inspire through adversity and complexity. So the warrior ethos remains essential. And key to winning tomorrow's fight is to better understand LISCO at a more tactical level of granularity. The greater emphasis on large-scale maneuver and defensive operations, on combined arms at scale, increased lethality, higher casualties, demands on logistics, the 24-7 nature of combat, and the emphasis on human performance. All in an operating environment that is increasingly urban, where air superiority is not guaranteed. Large volumes of UAS and where open source collection via cell phones and social media is both a vulnerability but also a reconnaissance capability. And we'll fight on a battlefield where it's hard to hide. Headquarters and units can obviously be found off poor camouflage, but it's also their electromagnetic signature. This reinforces our emphasis on mission command, operating on trust, intent, and shared visualization to minimize unnecessary command and control transmissions. And I could go on and on, and we'll discuss much of this here today and throughout the conference. Here at Fort Benning, we've done a lot already to refocus on tomorrow's fight, given we are potentially only a miscalculation from combat. You'll hear more specifics on the Commandants during the infantry and Armor lunches, but just a few points to highlight. The Maneuver Captain's Career Course and both Bullocks have already transitioned from a generic uh, decisive action threats environment to Russian and Chinese order of battle and the tactics in our ATB, ATP. So this is what they're planning against in the courses here. We're reviewing with a LISCO and a 2030 lens our doctrine and republishing battle drills and training and evaluation outlines. We're also assessing where we need new battle drills, such as react to UAS, or really air threats in general, giving the threat of loitering munitions, and procedures associated with minimizing our electromagnetic magnetic signature and jamming, as well as an increased role of deception in operations. We're piloting a new readiness level, or RL, progression for crew qualification on tanks and introducing the 19 Charlie MOS, which will increase readiness and lethality across our ABCTs. And we're looking at a variety of initiatives here, a LISCO Academy to better prepare our instructors, building several lanes such as a company minus defensive lane and combined arms breach lane out on terrain here at Fort Benning so leaders can see what right looks like. And our maneuver capability development and integration division, the MC did, is working other initiatives in support of the Combined Arms Center and Futures Command to include various force design updates, counter small UAS, robotics and AI capabilities, development of a multi-domain range here on Fort Benning, and a variety of experiments with new concepts and capabilities at our Maneuver Battle Lab, to include our annual Army Expeditionary Warfighting Experiment, AEWE, that will focus on small unit ISR, air and ground robotics and autonomous systems, electrification and power at the small unit level, and lethality. Again, all in a LISCO environment. Bottom line, we here at the MCOE play a critical role in this focus on tomorrow's fight, and we must ensure our graduates are prepared upon arrival to, to your units, and that your units have the right capabilities. We must lead the target. This week, we have a great cast of speakers and an agenda that's sure to be exciting, thought-provoking, and focus on tomorrow's fight. If you can please bring up the schedule. Each day of the conference follows a different theme. Today's theme is strategic guidance in Army 2030. We'll hear from the Secretary, Chief of Staff, and Sergeant Major of the Army on where the Army is headed. After lunch, we'll hear from Lieutenant General Rainey and Lieutenant General Martin about the Army of 2030, the new FM30, 
and for Major General Costanza will share his insights in fighting the Army of 2030 during a recent exercise. And General Retired Scott Miller will talk about a topic where there is no one more knowledgeable or experienced, the warrior ethos in the crucible of ground combat. There's also some great warrior corner events today on the DOD Close Combat Lethality Task Force, ground vehicle electrification, and the next generation combat vehicle. As you've seen out in the hallways, various units in industry have set up displays throughout the building for footprint inside and outside. We have the infantry lunch today and Doughboy dinner this evening. Day two will focus on insights from current operations and intel overview, hearing uh, via VTC from overseas from the 5th and 18th Airborne Corps commanders on their missions and implications for the maneuver forces. We'll have a think tank panel after lunch with some preeminent minds sharing thoughtful perspective on the fight in the Ukraine and an update from USERPAC on their mission, especially with respect to China. Warrior Corner events include a primer on data literacy and management, a CTC lessons uh, learned, which is focused at the company level and below for the, the captains and uh, below in the audience, and then one on Army, Army standardization training to include the new R RL progression that's being piloted at Fort Hood with the 1st Cavalry Division. There'll be an Armor lunch and an Armor social this evening. Day three will focus on recruiting and training an Army, where we'll hear from our new TRADOC and FORCECOM commanders and their command sergeants major we hear from several panels, one on recruiting, one on fighting at the division level, and finally one with our DIRT combat training centers. Warrior Corner events include one on H2F, a JRTC panel, and cohesion assessment initiative across the Army. Finally, to all our students from the career course, BOLEX, NCOA courses that are in here today, what you're learning in your class every day is vital to your development. But it's not every day that you get a chance to hear from senior leaders and experts and better understand the why and how important your training here is, because soon you'll be at the tip of the spear.